Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Pixel Rich Games, where we strive in making super hard, super fun. In this episode of Elden Ring, I want to share with y'all my bleed build and why I chose every single item in the build. Before we begin, give your boy some support by subscribing to the channel and liking this video to get YouTube's algorithm to promote the channel. So let's start with the mandatory part of this bleed build. Like most you've seen out there, Sepoku is the center of this build. For those who don't know what this Ash of War does yet, for a full minute, we get a 30 flat damage buff and 84 bleed buildup. To oversimplify it, higher base damage and faster bleed explosions. Now apply this on both your dual wielded weapons of choice. Bleed buildup stick like crazy. Now since I started talking about weapons, let's jump right into our options. My weapon of choice is the Curved Bandit Sword. Just like the Godskin Peeler and Twin Blade combo, their jumping power stance slash strong attack get multiple hits in real quick. More damage, more bleed ticks. Until I get my second Godskin Peeler, I'll probably stick with my Curved Bandit Swords. Another pretty solid option is the Uji Katana, but it plays and builds a bit differently from the two cause it doesn't have the awesome jump attack. Main difference between the first two and the Uji Katana is the Uji Katana has blood loss built into it, so other affinity options can come into play. If you choose to build with the Uji Katana, I would recommend running Occult Affinity to get a B stat scaling on Arcane. More on stats later. Now going back to the Curved Bandit Sword. I wouldn't do that because even if the numbers look really good with Occult, keep in mind that the Curved Bandit Sword does not have Bloodlust buildup built in. So if you run Occult, you lose Bleed Explosions once Sepoku expires. Just stick with Blood Affinity if you run the Bandits or Twin Blades. Now for talismans, let me give you the four that I run first. Most important of them all is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation that boosts attack power by a whopping 20% whenever there's blood loss around you. Next on the list is the Claw Talisman. This buffs jump attacks by 15%. Don't run this if you're building with the Uchi Katana or something else that doesn't have the jumping power stance. These first two are my solid recommendations. The next two are more of preference. I have for you the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia that boosts attack power with consecutive attacks. I chose to run this for situations that I'm not able to jump. Now this one, this goes really well with the Uchi Katana. Rotten Winged Sword Insignia comes pretty late in the game, but there's another version the Winged Sword Insignia that we gain access to really early and I recommend running with this first if you choose to go this route. The last one that I run is the Green Turtle Talisman which buffs stamina recovery speed by roughly 17%. That's 8 stamina points per second. Doesn't sound that awesome but wait till we get later in the video. Another solid option for this build is the Earth Tree's Favor that increases HP by 3%, Stamina by 6.75%, and Equip Load by 5%. If you choose to go with heavier armor, you can go with the Great Jar's Arsenal that raises Equip Load by 19%. Now if you feel squishy, try running the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that reduces physical damage that we receive by 20%. If you're still not feeling any of these, you can simply go with the Golden Scarab to get 20% more runes from defeated enemies. Now let's talk armor. For headgear, I highly recommend going with the White Mask which has the same effect with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, but instead of 20%, this adds an additional 10%. Combine these two, that's already a solid 30% attack power buff whenever we cast Sepoku. For the chest armor, 
I go with the Raptor's black feathers, cause aside from looking real good, this also buffs jumping attacks by around 10%. For gloves and boots, I go with whichever. Bullgoat parts are really good if you have the stats to spare for more endurance or if you're willing to run the Great Jar's arsenal. For my flask setup, I run a pure green flask. Green spell crystal tier boosts max stamina by 15% for 3 minutes. I'd say that's equivalent to being able to add another swing before having to tactically retreat. Then for the second, I run the green burst crystal tier that boosts stamina recovery by 15 per second for 3 minutes. Now, combine that with our green turtle talisman, that's an additional 23 stamina recovered per second. Our base stamina recovery, if I'm not mistaken, is 45 stamina points per second. So let's say we have 30 points in endurance. That'll bring us up to 125 stamina. Full bar. With just the base recovery of 45, we recover back our full stamina bar in less than 3 seconds. Now with our talisman and flask setup, we can do that in less than 2. A second may not sound as much, but once you run this setup, you'll feel clunky without it. Kinda like getting used to faster refresh rate on your monitor or phone. Finally, let's talk about stat builds. The two primary stats for the weapons mentioned in this video are Dexterity and Arcane. For Blood Affinity, going with Dex over Arcane will generally bring more DPS to the table, because the stat scaling will be better for Dex. Occult Affinity on the other hand is the opposite. Arcane gets the better scale in here. Don't be tempted to run this on a non-innate bleed weapon just because the numbers look real good for occult. I did try it and it didn't go as well as I hoped it would. Both Dex and Arcane soft cap at 80 stat points so just prioritize accordingly depending on your weapon choice. Once you feel like you've hit a DPS rough patch, I would recommend investing some points in a faith to gain access to two awesome buffs. 15 Faith gives access to Flame Grant Me Strength that adds 20% physical damage and 20% fire damage, though this only lasts for 30 seconds. We don't have any source for fire damage, so that's just zero. Good news is, this stacks with Golden Vow that we can use with 25 points in a Faith. Golden Vow lasts significantly longer at a minute and 20. Gives us a 20% damage buff and 10% damage negation. Strength I'd say is as needed and wholly dependent on the weapon that you pick and your class's starting strength. For Vigor, the first soft cap is 40. When you have more points to invest in Vigor after this, Limit yourself from going over 60 because beyond that is just wasting your stat points. For endurance, 25 is a pretty good number to initially aim for. With 25, you get solid rotations in and some left for a tactical retreat. Check out the links in the description on guides for items that are mentioned here. I'll try to complete all of them eventually. Alright, that's it for me in this episode. I hope you find this guide useful. Thanks again for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video to see more content on Elden Ring. Hit that bell to get notified whenever I have a new vid out. See you on the next one. Stay healthy, keep safe, and God bless us all.